Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles, and we are coming to you from an altitude of 5,280 feet. However, our guest today, who I am so grateful to have joining us, is on the other side of the globe, Dr. Marcus Chacos. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I apologize in advance. He chose a chiropractic career, and we are so grateful to do that because he has had such an impact on the chiropractic profession in Australia through his fundraising efforts and the things he's done for many institutions. I'm sure we're going to talk about that. But Marcus was really fascinated with the human body and with healthcare, and gratefully, he came across um, a gentleman that really put him on the path of learning more about chiropractic, um, which is, uh, oh, wait, what is his name? I lost his name. It is John Kelly. Yes, John Kelly, uh, because we talked about this before, John Kelly, and really put him um, in a path of philosophically based chiropractic, uh, philosophically focused, and he went to Macquarie uh, and received a Bachelor of Science in Anatomy at University of New South Wales, and, uh, you know, gratefully, he got in the path of foundational values and principles of chiropractic and that has had an impact and on so many lives and that is probably why his favorite chiropractic quote which is also uh one of mine um you know is the power that made the body heals the body and happens no other way and i you know that rings into that you never know how far reaching something will affect the lives of millions tomorrow and i know that dr marcus has impacted many lives i hope that one day you can make it across to mile high uh live and this year mile high will be in june Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Marcus. Uh, Dr. Danny, it is always an absolute pleasure. And, you know, I, I feel very humbled every time we get to speak because I hold you in such high regard. And yes, Mile High is on my agenda. I think it is not only one of the premier events, but it's where great minds come together to share Prince with chiropractic. And, you know, it is it is just such an imperative to get to, to that event for those that haven't been there, get there. For me, I'm going to make it on my principal agenda to find a way across the waters to be there, to rub shoulders with the legends of chiropractic that attend. So excited to talk. It's always great to connect, Danny. Well, I'm excited to talk too. And I see that you look at your shirt. We're both men in black today. And what's on the back of your shirt there? That's sacred trust. There we go. So we have the sacred trust guardian shirt. What's the Guardians? Tell me about that. Guardians 100, the Australian Chiropractic College uh, had its inaugural year last year, and it's a vitalistic principal teaching institution. In Australia, we have had philosophy removed from the curriculum of all teaching institutions, making their own big philosophical void in, in, in this incredible country of ours. And the Australian Chiropractic College said, no, no more. We've had, we cannot continue down this pathway we cannot adulterate chiropractic and so the Australian Chiropractic College said we're going to we're going to fight the fight we're going to step boldly forward to create an educational institution and deliver vitalistic chiropractic care to our students to create principled chiropractors and the the Guardians 100 is the the chiropractors here in Australia that are committed to upholding the sacred trust in the educational institution and bringing students to the college serving the college's mission uh, and you know impacting the world through our teaching institutions and the profession here in Australia. So, you know, I'm, I'm honoured to be considered a guardian of the Sacred Trust here in Australia and a supporter of the Australian Chiropractic College. Well, I'm very glad that you're doing that and about the Australian Chiropractic College with the direction that Australia has unfortunately gone with, with, with its education. I have to ask this, and, and I'm thinking you probably know this, I have no clue. Um, Australia had to be at some point very philosophically focused in the majority. What, what was the beginnings of chiropractic in Australia that you know or that you can share briefly? The beginning of chiropractic was, well, obviously it's a long history, not as long as America, but certainly we, we began with RMIT, the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, um, which at that point when it originated was filled with vitalism. And then the Sydney College of Chiropractic 
And yeah, the, the dean of that college was John Kelly, and he was not only the dean, um, he was also the philosophy teacher. So the Sydney College and RMIT steeped in philosophy, steeped in great teachers having come, uh, founders from America, bringing principled chiropractic. And yeah, it's, it's a long history, but you know, when we started to move into the, I guess, aligning with the teaching institutions, the professional teaching institutions, the universities, they determined the curriculum. So Sydney College of Chiropractic became uh, Macquarie Uni or joined and amalgamated with Macquarie University. Macquarie University has a medical foundation to it and said, well, you don't need these subjects, let's take them away. And then, then the Queensland, uh, South Queensland removed its philosophy, Murdoch University removed its philosophy, RMIT, um, well, originally it was called Philip Institute of Technology. It was a college again. Um, so all of the private teaching institutions became part of larger bodies. And as you know, the agendas of those larger bodies are to contain and eliminate the chiropractic profession. And right. the way to do that is change the lexicon, remove the philosophy, create the philosophy as part of history and paint a picture of chiropractic as a, a manipulating vertebral lesions instead of adjusting spinal subluxations. And as a result, you know, for over, it actually got to the point where they fired John Kelly from the college because- Oh, he, wow. Because he was teaching principal philosophy and they said, this isn't on the curriculum. And there were chiropractors that were sneaking onto campus to share the message and, and it became, you know, a, a real war. And that's why the Australian Chiropractic College said, we've got to touch the lives of students that are, they're being robbed of their heritage. They're being robbed of the chiropractic truth. And, you know, it, it's hard to imagine. It's almost impossible to believe, but yet it's entirely true. And when a chiropractor graduates and says, you know, a chiropractor who talks about DD, BJ, subluxation, is crazy they have already been infiltrated in their teachings in their thinkings and they are no longer practicing chiropractic and in fact the president of rmit the the the, the college um well, the, the university our director was asked a question three years ago and this was big impetus to chiropractic here in australia the australian chiropractic college when interviewed he said how are you differentiating between your graduating physiotherapists and chiropractors and he answered we can't they have the same curriculum oh. that's and worth pausing to, on and to give Are me you, some timing so give me some timing um because again other side of the world i'm not as involved with the policy because you may not be as involved with the politics that are here and what's going on in the educational institutions when was it that John Kelly was, Kelly was fired? How many years ago? Is it five years ago, a decade? I don't have a timeline. Yeah, that, that, that was a decade ago. Okay. So I graduated 25 years ago. He was my teacher. He remained there for, for a, another 15 years um, beyond that. And he, you know, his son graduated three years ago and his son never had his father as a teacher. So. His father wasn't there eight years ago when he began his teaching. So it's, yeah, it's been 10 years since the uh, Macquarie University said, we no longer need the services of one of the greatest philosophical teachers this country has seen and said, thank you for your time, but stop. And this almost sounds Socratic. Stop manipulating the minds of our students. Um, we don't want these rebellious thinkers. <laughs> and so then, so then that's, a decade. So this is then decade down the rabbit hole of what has happened philosophically with the institutions. So tell us, uh, bring us up to date in the U.S. here. What's going on with the Australia School? Yeah. So the Australian School started last year. Um, uh, in, <laughs> we opened, had an incredible uh, event called Concordia, which is the equivalent of you know Sherman's Lyceum. Um, right. And, you know, it's an amazing, and we have licensing in New Zealand College, um, you know, it's dy dynamic essentials, I guess, would be in comparative as well. Right. So we, we produced Concordia and we had that event. Amazing. We opened the college with incredible fanfare and a week later, COVID hit. 
And so the college opened after many, many battles with government institutions, other chiropractic colleges, Macquarie University in particular, said, you know what, we actually do not want this teaching institution to exist. And they actually went to the government and you know, tabled complaints against the college, identifying oh. that they weren't delivering education. So years of battle, it took more than four years within the education department to get approval for the college, for the curriculum, for the teaching, even though the curriculum was gifted from, from New Zealand, Zealand College, which New Zealand's curriculum was gifted from Sherman's right. um, curriculum. So it's full circle from the way philosophy travels from the right. heart in America to, to New Zealand, to Australia. And so we opened, um, you know, 2020, incredible. We were excited. We had 10, uh, sorry, 12 initial students. It was incredible. The energy, the drive, the passion. It was an amazing inaugural year with the students, an incredible level of commitment from the teachers and the, the supported chiropractic profession. And then, you know, we changed and the finances that, that impacted the students weren't allowed to attend. We didn't have an online component. And so, yeah, that, that's, that's what happened last year. And I guess in part, that's what created why I'm here I'm talking with you, doing what I'm doing, why I'm, why I'm fulfilling our sacred trust, because the college smashed by um, constraints within uh, the, the world environment didn't have the funds to go on. Right. And there's a bizarre, bizarre, I've got to share this because it's insane, but it's so true. There's a requirement that when you produce a university or a college and it's accredited, that you must demonstrate business acumen to go with your teaching acumen. And so we needed to have money in the bank at the end of the year, evidencing our judicial responsibility and sustainability as a business. Except they said you can't host these students. <laughs> So Patrick Sim, inaugural president, incredible human being, passionate. Yes, I know Patrick. I know Dr. Yes, Sim. serving the mission. He calls me up and says, Marcus, I mean, we're not going to make it through. We are not going to make it through. We fought the fight, but they've told us we can't do it. What can you do? Can you help? And, well, we, you know, we did not know what was going to take place in the world. Um whether or not the practice was going to remain open in that current climate. Uh, so I took a responsibility of saying, I don't know whether I can or should give funds, but I can fundraise. Mm -hmm. And so we initiated a conversation with some incredible chiropractors from Heidi Horvick to, um, you know, Donnie Epstein, <laughs> rockstar chiropractor, you know. Um, and we brought 20 of the world's leading chiropractors together, put together an event called Pain to Brain, the neuroscience of chiropractic science, uh, the neuroscience of chiropractic raised um, 120,000 in a weekend um, through ticketed entry to a great event. We started fundraising for the professionals. So um, the college made it through that year. The college now has more students and in year two is building momentum. Year three looks like it's going to be incredible. We're going to hit break even and, you know, the chiropractic college has not only survived, it looks like it's going to thrive. It's making a statement about our profession and it's creating a trajectory to restore the sacred trust. Well, to and I want to, I'm really, I, I led into that because I want people here to hear this, our listeners to know the history and know where you were to where you were coming to and then how you took action, which is this people need to take different actions in Europe than they need to do in Australia than we do here, but we all need, need to take action to uplift the principle and make sure we have people going to the institutions that will further our foundational values and principles and chiropractic practice in, in, in being able to practice and be taught in alignment with our foundational values and principles. So now I know you started a new a fundraiser with the clinical applications of chiropractic philosophy, um, which is a very important topic matter because there's a lot of discussion about philosophy that may not be brought into how does that show up in clinical practice incongruent. So 
this gives people a little bit more of understanding of what actually is going on down under. So tell us about the impetus of the, the concept of the clinical application of chiropractic, the, the content people would gain. Just the, oh, you know, I've done a number of summits, the, the painted brain, I did a family wellness super conference that raised funds for pediatric uh, research because we need that too. And, you know, we did a subluxation summit uh, for the Strand Spinal Research Foundation and to raise subluxation based research dollars. But this, this is so close to my heart. This is such an important topic. Uh, I love it. And I'm, you know what? It, it is an imperative for the profession. So the, I, this, this event, the clinical applications of chiropractic philosophy is available to every single chiropractor. It's not only a down under matter, this, we have some massive, you know, speakers from all around the world talking principle of chiropractic, talking philosophy and how it actually plays out in practice. It takes the theoretical elements of philosophy and makes it practical, tangible, realizable, and shows you how it influences and plays out in practice. We're talking, how does philosophy influence your marketing? How does it change your you know, communications? What happens at the level of your history and examination? Where does philosophy impact your conversions, your retention? What type of in-house education is taking place from a philosophical basis? When you adjust, where's your mind? What's your intention? We have speakers on every topic that addresses every aspect of practice to ensure that you can look through clinic, practice, impact through the lens of philosophy and the speakers we have. We have Danny Knowles, an absolute rock star, speaking <laughs> on chiropractic philosophy and, and, and how business success is a reflection of philosophy. We have amazing speakers. We've got Phil McMaster, we've got Bill Deccan, you know, you name it, what, you know, Donald Francis, we've got from all over the world, every country, philosophical foundations that bring an understanding to, okay, philosophy is not just, yeah, I get it, you know, I'm a philosophical chiropractor, I know that the body heals. It's not about that or limited to that. It yes. is about recognizing, realizing that every aspect of your practice is expressed as philosophy. And when you know and you understand that and you meet the challenges you face, wow, that's an incredible opportunity. So now I'm putting this together. What are some things that you gleamed from that in terms of clinical practice and philosophy and how they time to you know tie together because i know when i put these things on uh i learned so much i gained so much and it helps me grow so what are some things that you found particularly valuable in the content well oh my gosh to, to distill that down to not a 40 hours worth of content that the uh project <laughs> provides is a challenge i i think what it the first thing it did for me now firstly John Kelly taught me philosophy, steeped in chiropractic philosophy. He brought out Reggie Gold. I've read the green books, the blue books, the white books. I, I, I love philosophy. I'm steeped in philosophy. And yet there were a number of calls I got off and I cried mm. because for all that I know and even for all that I do, I still feel at times that there is a gap between what I know and what I want to know, mm. who I am and who I want to be, how I practice and how I want to practice. And I think the gaps were all, all of those gaps began to be filled because of the wisdom keepers of our profession, sharing their insights, sharing their knowledge, gifting their time, their, their, their wisdom. It allowed me to, the greatest gift of this was for me personally, to see those gaps and begin to renew my desire to bridge the gaps and become even tighter in my commitment to the principle. Right. And, you know, that's a very important, that word, um, you can think of the uh, uh, trains in London, mind the gap. The gap is a vital concept to understand because that's where growth happens. Once you're aware of the gap, whatever it is in life, it could be you know other things obviously other than chiropractic. Once you're aware of that gap, that's when you can have. That's when growth can begin. So 
Um, and that growth, there's so many people that will know philosophy um, and can quote many things and really understand through and through, but then there's uh, putting that into clinical practice is a whole nother dimension uh, and making sure those mesh together versus that they're, they're separate. So I'm, I'm really good, really good topic matter to, to, to put together for people. Cause I see so often things that people are doing clinically that don't mesh with the philosophy, but they think they know the philosophy. So uh, a very good air, good, 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 good on you to uh, put a focus on that. I, I was, and I said, I felt really excited to do it. And I also know for those that uh, may not have experienced the teachings of chiropractic philosophy, for those that are already have mastery, it fills gaps. But for those that are new to philosophy, it's revelation. Mm -hmm. For those that have had exposure to philosophy, it's, you know, it's a deep dipping. It actually has such a amazing universality. Uh, which is why I'm so proud of it. And, you know, the conversation online that's been happening, so that, that, you know, we, we're in launch phase at the moment and, you know, the, the speakers are sharing, you know, the, their message and there's such a strong engagement from the speakers and there's such a, a wow factor from them saying, oh my gosh, you're on this. And, you know, I'm seeing posts where they're circling each other saying, oh my gosh, it's the, the best of if goes here. And it's, it's like this incredible engagement online from the, these great speakers, the best of the best are here, and they're passionate about it because they're seeing, again, like you said, a, a unique event. I don't think anything like this has been done where we've said, let's make every aspect of clinic a conversation point through the lens of philosophy. And th there's this incredible energy about it. Not only are there great speakers sharing information, there are great speakers excited by this message. And I'm so humbled by it. I'm, I'm enthralled by it. It's like the, the amount of messages that I'm getting about the, the, this event. And then we had a VIP upgrade. So while it won't go live for another week from the recording of this, I'm not sure what time this will air, but um, you, know, you get a VIP upgrade, people are messaging me saying, oh my gosh, I sat down and I literally did a day dipping into that content. This is rock star content. This is epic information. Um, and this is from great chiropractors who've, who've already done a lot within the community and the profession. And so it's, it's a beautiful message. It's a timely message and it, and it serves every chiropractor to invest in their philosophical growth and development so they can have the confidence, the certainty, the belief. And yes, it will influence their clinical capabilities. It will enhance their technique. It will offer them the ability to choose wisely their thoughts, their actions, and to deliver the care with alignment and uh, oh my gosh, I, I get excited every time I talk about the event because it was so powerful for me. And I know that means so many people also will benefit from it. And just, can you just say some of the names of people that are on that? Well, we've got um, Bill Deccan opens it, Phil McMaster closes it, uh, yourself. Uh, we also have the other, um, Pat Simmons, the president of the Australian Chiropractic College. We've got Dr. Orga, we've got um, Dr. Um, Donald Francis. We've got Dr. Judy. Um, you know, the whole, the whole number. Of Strauss goes on. Um, Dr. Erickson. Uh, Dr. Um, oh gosh, now you got me. Um, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to. I know you're going to be like, I'm missing 10 of them. Don't worry about it. But I want people to get a taste of what it is. Now, this was done, uh, correct? This was a fundraiser for which organization? This is, uh, wow. This is a. An incredible, so the, the Schumer College and New Zealand College produce a program in the Southern Hemisphere called the Australian, uh, sorry, the Academy of Chiropractic Philosophers. And I know that's a Northern Hemisphere thing as well. And um, we haven't, it hasn't run for four years because it's, it costs an absolute fortune to get the ACP teachers over to Australia. And so we, it, as much as everybody would love to have this available to them, they it becomes so cost of um, cost prohibitive that we don't get as good a take up as we do. So what I said to to, to Dr. Bill Deccan and um, Phil McMaster, I said, let me fundraise to subsidise the program so that we can get. And again, here's a number of the other speakers: Dr. Felicia Stewart over, um, Sam Floriani's on it. Um, as, as I said, Judy Campanelli. Um, Dr. Amy Spalestra there, if we could get them over 
to Australia, teaching what we are doing, what you are doing there, and bring Ron Castellucci over as well. And I said, Eric Russell, if they could all come here to teach principal philosophy, it will change the trajectory of chiropractic. And I said, when well, they said, well, of course, it's, we do that, but it, we don't get the take up because it's too expensive. So this fundraises to subsidize that program so that we can bring those great speakers here um, and ensure that the event gets the subscription instead of eight or 10 people signing up, we're gonna get 20, 30 people. And then we can have Jack Baller, who's on the event here, Lee and um, you know, it's, it's amazing who's there um, and, and what we're going to do to bring this event to Australia. And I'm excited because not only is it, as I said, a rock star lineup, it's the idea of bringing those people to Australia to share this message so that philosophical chiropractic takes a foothold here in Australia and in taking that foothold, and I say this with sincerity, also saves America. And um, I, and I yeah. shared this story because, you know, I think of it like the Great War. You know, if you're fighting a war on two or three fronts, it's pretty hard to do. D-Day was an amazing event during World War II where the United States said, we cannot endure what is happening in Europe. The freedoms of humanity are going to take be taken from us if we do not step in. The world came together, America saved Europe. Right. And that ability to continue the fight on multiple fronts, because if Germany takes out England, France, it's now war on one front, they take out Russia, and we don't know what the future of humanity has. America steps in, in their D-Day, to save, really, what was the Great War. And right. America steps in for Australia in our D-Day. It's our decision that we have to bring philosophy back. And if we collapse here in Australia, the containment and elimination of chiropractic gets its full force there in America. So we are grateful for the American support. We are grateful for the American teachers and we are grateful for you. And this event is our contribution to fighting that fight, saving the profession. And we want love for the chiropractic profession to jump on board to support this event because they support this event. They support philosophy. They support philosophical chiropractic. They save chiropractic throughout the world. And this is, this is an important thing. We've all said this, um, oh, you know, when the internet came along, the world got a little bit smaller, you know, so like we could be more connected um, and be aware of what's going on in other parts of the world. Our profession healing is about connection and it's about community. And, you know, that's the essence of chiropractic is connection and, and community and the, the body being in community and us being able to know that what happens in one part of the body affects the whole body. And wonder what happens in one part of chiropractic throughout the world impacts chiropractic throughout the world. And being, you know, being that, well, it's not, New Zealand's not all that far away. The world's gotten smaller. Australia's not all that far away. And uh, to be able to support each other uh, that maybe we couldn't have in 1940 or 50 as chiropractors um, or been aware of. Uh, so really uh, hats off to you for, for leading that. Um, and the thing is, what people have to remember, what's most important is not the profession. It's humanity. Because if humanity loses access to care, that's the concern. And access to real, clinically excellent, philosophically driven chiropractic care with the correct intention um, of how you're serving the patient because uh, the apathy around that will alert, lead to allopathy, as my friend Liam Schubel says, right? Apathy will lead to allopathy. So what can people do to help? The, the only thing that, and it's not what they can do to help me, it's what we've done to help you. This event really will grow your confidence, your certainty. It will bridge the gap between where you are now, philosophically, where you would like to be. Really, I'm, in the show notes, there'll be a link. Click on the link go purchase the program. 
for $97. Oh my gosh, it is, you have got 40, nearly 40 hours of content of the world's leading philosophical speakers sharing how it can change and transform your life. So yeah, in the show notes, click on the link. That $97, you get lifetime access to the videos. You get the um, MP4s to listen to your car. You can come back at time and again. And you know that, that beautiful gift means, one, that it's, it's not fundraising. It's event hosting where we give more value by a 10x at least, more value for your investment in the program than we get for a donation. So we're not asking people to donate. We're saying that model's outdated. Well, it's not entirely outdated, but I like a different model. My model is rather than ask for a donation, you know, help us in chiropractic, help us with our college, help us here, there and everywhere. We all can ask for donations. I've changed the model. I've said, let me give more in value than I'm asking for you from you as a donation so that it is inconsequential in your giving a massive return in your receiving. So go to the link, click on it, invest in the program, be transformed. And and I highly recommend people do that. Look, one of the things I do nearly daily is I listen to chiropractic and I don't have to, I, I can do it on the go on my phone. I listen to all the mile high episodes. I listen to programs like this. Um, you can always be you know, when I was in chiropractic school, I used to have audio cassettes. I would go into the Sherman College Library and I would get audio cassettes of Reggie Gold and Joe D'Onofrio and uh, Joe Strauss and Tom Gilardi. And I would listen that to and from school because I knew I had lots of, you know, yes, even at Sherman, you had to take classes that were diagnostic and, you know, you had to for CC, et cetera. Um, but I knew I was going to put in as much chiropractic philosophy as I could. This is your way to do that and help an institution, uh, you know, help chiropractic as a profession in, 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 uh, in, in Australia, which will also help, obviously, and around the world. Um, and so we will have the links there. Now, this launched already or it is launching? Clear that up for everybody. Uh, it goes live on the 26th to the 28th of November. Oh, perfect. And you can, again, you can, if you... You, you can go straight there and sign up and immediately get access to all of the videos as a VIP. Um, if you, for whatever reason, have limited funds, then we're making it free for that 26 to 28. We're not even saying you have to invest or support financially. We want to support you. We want to add value to you. You get those three days to watch all of the videos if you like. If you went, I couldn't get through them all because there are so many, which there are. This is so great. I want to come back to it. And you will then yeah, invest in the program for $97. Otherwise, my gift to you so that you can grow in your principled approach to chiropractic and it's free for the 26th to the 28th. Otherwise, jump on board and become a VIP and have lifetime access. That is just outstanding, outstanding. And you can impact chiropractic for the better and then continue to grow. This is how we can grow and learn um, even without having to leave your home or even get out of your car, you know, <laughs> you can, you can grow, um, and, and learn. Let me ask you something, um, Marcus, there's a lot of people that love and value chiropractic. Um, and then there's a few that will take action to do things, to support, expand, um, chiropractic. And I don't mean expand it into scope, but you know what I mean, expand <laughs> the reach of chiropractic. Um, what fuels you to do that, to be one of those few? Uh, it, it, I, I can't even find the words to, to express or explore that. And I think there's the several elements to that answer. My, my first answer to that is chiropractic has given me so much. It has given me an incredible life. It has given me incredible opportunities. Um, my health, my happiness, my sense of service. It, it's, it's allowed my family to live in ways that are um, expressive and, and full and complete. It's given me a philosophy for life, a, a way of experiencing, expressing meaning in the world. And to be honest with you, I wasn't always such a contributor. 
my family came first for so many years. Yes, I had a wonderful philosophical um, framework to come into chiropractic. I'm a first generation chiropractor and I had my first adjustment was at chiropractic college. So I didn't know the gift um, of chiropractic when I first entered the profession. Um, honestly, I followed my wife who enrolled in chiropractic and then we had children and she never completed and still she's a chiropractor without a license. Um, however, when we had children, I invested so deeply and heavily into those while still you know, growing in my philosophy. And I would read to my children an hour a night. Um, I worked for the last 10 years, three days a week with a still a very rocking practice, but I coached my children's um, semi-professional soccer teams. Um, and so that was 15 to 25 hours a week of practice, 15 to 25 hours a week of soccer. Um, I was always driven to just contribute and add value where I could. And then when my kids moved away from the professional stream of soccer, I had 15 to 25 hours. And that's when Patrick called me. It's not that you have to serve right now. It's when it is time for you to serve. And it's, it was literally a moment of the profession needs me. And I can't deny that need. And I already had a love and a gratitude and appreciation. But when you look to what the profession and the world needs from you, you can either serve or think about serving. Mm. And it became so obvious to me that the college needed help. It became so obvious to me. I didn't want my children, when I heard that quote, from the president of RMIT saying that we are graduating physio practice. I didn't want that for my children. I didn't want that for my, my family, for my practice members. I didn't want the world to have a diluted chiropractic. And I realized that I had the ability to take an action. Now, I'm a very, and I know we spoke about this before we came on, Danny, I'm a very strong introvert. And People may not know this now that they see me in front of the camera and that I talk the way that I talk fairly confidently, but I was one of, and I, and I say this re real trepidation, but simultaneous needing for people to know the truth that anyone can take action. I would go to conferences and when it was break time, I would go to the toilet for a long time. So I didn't actually have to be in that mess of a hundred people. Uh -huh. um, it was overwhelming for me. It was really uncomfortable for me. So I loved chiropractic, but I didn't want to be on stages. I didn't want to be in groups. I didn't want to be a presenter or a lecturer. I just loved the profession and I loved serving my practice members and impacting the health and lives of people in my community. I did my part at, at a local level. But when the need became clear that there was more that needed to be done, 20, 22, 23 years into practice when I began this journey to, for chiropractic education online, serving um, any vitalistic organization through fundraising. I overcome my fears, my doubts, my uncertainties, my insecurities. I got, I, I still remember to this day, my first interview, why this was my first interview uh, was Heidi Horvick um, on the Neuroscience Summit because she's my life celebrity crush. You know, I love her. And I got on to, the, to interview her and she was so beautiful. She calmly, after I muffed the introduction and said, can we start again? And did that three times. I couldn't complete a sentence. <laughs> like, however, I'm like, sorry, Heidi, I, I, I know I'm slurring. She's like, just slow down. Okay, hi, everybody. This is, I she's like, seriously, just slow down. Have you written it down? It's like in front of me. I can't read. My eyes have gone blurry. I'm so stressed. I'm sorry, Heidi. She was so graceful and gave grace to that moment. We can all recognize we have weaknesses, we have faults, we have limitations. But chiropractic, it says you, you can transcend them. Innate flows through you. And the expression of life, it's there when you make the decision. And so we all have the ability to take action, whichever way we decide. Don't do nothing. Greatness is within you. Choose that path. I am a better person, a better chiropractor, a greater leader, and a better family man because I no longer decided to play small. I unleashed the bigness of the fellow within. 
by conscious and deliberate choice. I've read the book. I've lived part of that life, but now maybe I want to be BJ's apprentice. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I'm going to live it because I love it. And we all can do that. And it's a very important reminder. Um, the sun's always there, just the clouds get in the way. That's the chiropractic principle. And eight is always on the job. Subluxations get in the way. And uh, politics, education, uh, political agendas, finances will get in the way of people learning the principle. Principle is there, but we have to make sure that it lives in practices and that has to happen in the educational institutions. Otherwise, the licensing and the, uh, the testing boards it all can get in the way of that, just like subluxations can block uh, the innate doing its job to, the, to, its, to, its, to its maximum capacity. So Marcus, Dr. Marcus, thank you so much for doing your job to your maximum capacity and may your maximum capacity or optimal capacity be better tomorrow uh, for all of us. Um, and thank you for taking up the, the, the torch. Um, and, and I don't want to say fight because it's really leading. Um, we don't have to necessarily be fighting and be a warrior as much as we need to lead and make the right choices for humanity. So thank you for doing so. Say one more time how people can have access. We will have it in the notes. So if someone's listening to this on their driving, don't, don't, get a sub, don't cause any subluxations while you're driving. But how do people get access to uh, this newest uh, clinical applications of chiropractic philosophy? Yeah, go to clinic chiropracticphilosophy.com.au, chiropracticphilosophy.com.au. There's a little um, name and email box on the, the right-hand side. There's a great video, by the way. The promo video is worth watching. It is rock star. It goes through all of the incredible speakers and the message that we're sharing. Uh, that's that's worth watching on its own. It's so cool. Um, and then, yeah, you'll, you'll be able to either watch it for free on the 26th to 28th of November, a VIP upgrade. If you're listening to this after the 26th to 28th of November 2021, it'll be evergreen. You'll be able to access at any point, any time, um, and it will be a true gift to you, to your team, to your practice, to the profession. And yeah, chiropracticphilosophy.com.au. Perfect. You know, uh, as you know, November 25th, I think, you know, is a big holiday in the U.S. It's Thanksgiving. So this is perfect for the thing to do rather than uh, the Black Friday sales and all the uh, uh, spam of that you'll receive. Listen to some great chiropractic on the 26th, uh, the day after Thanksgiving. So thank you so much, Marcus, for all you do. Thank you, for everybody, for being listeners two mile high and, and remember uh be on higher ground november uh back, back in june june 2nd to 5th and be uh tuned in november 26th to the clinical applications of chiropractic philosophy thank you so much marcus uh thank you for leading up the charge we're grateful for people doing that around the world and um doing the doing leading the way you are uh keep changing spines lives and minds with chiropractic